Having just woken up, I've suddenly remembered I'm spending the next seven hours in economy. But fear not, because today we explore if premium economy is worth the upgrade, flying with British Airways on their Boeing 777. Due to booking change, we're starting today's journey at London Gatwick, flying to Doha Airport. I'll get into how I pay for today's flight later in the video. Because it's premium economy, uh, you don't get lounge access, but because I'm being British Airways Gold, I get to use the fast track for security and also the lounge. We covered what is a very beautiful lounge on our comparison of British Airways in economy versus business in Europe when we travel to Turin. So for those who are interested, I'll post this on the end of the video. Otherwise, it's off to today's flight. If you're traveling premium economy, then you're in group three. But because I've British Airways gold status should be in group one, but for some reason it's not showing on the boarding card. They did try to rectify it, but couldn't anything about it. So you may not be aware, but premium economy has basically become like the hottest product available right now. Uh, even Emirates has really upgraded their product on the A380. It's something we'd love to try in the near future. British Airways operates a small fleet of Boeing 777-200s from London Gatwick to leisure destinations including Cancun, Orlando and today's destination Doha, just to name a few. The gate is about 10 minutes away, so while I get my steps in, let's see what today's flight entails. Taking about 6 hours and 45 minutes, we'll cover a distance of 3,239 miles. That's pretty easy in economy, but again, is it worth the upgrade? I will just add, today's flight was a bit of a nightmare. You see, a few weeks ago, I was originally flying Qatar all the way to Bangkok to experience their beautiful first class product on the A380. Unfortunately, Qatar changed the booking and bumped me down to business class. Even though it's really poor customer service and they canceled the flight, I'm not entitled to ask for availability. So to secure what reward bookings remained and to get me back on the A380, I had to compromise for today's flight. This is, however, a really good opportunity to try a different product. Here's a quick guide to the boarding groups for business class and premium economy, noting that groups four to nine are for economy. That's a lot of groups. But now it's time to board this rather old, but really well kept Boeing 777-200, which in the fleet average about 23 years old. Premium Economy is laid out in a 242 configuration over a staggering six rows. That's a very high number of 48 seats. And behind this is Economy with an even denser 343. That's 252 seats in total. Premium Economy features 38 inches of pitch. That's the space between your seat and the one in front and 18.5 inches of width, which puts it right on the average for the industry. This is British Airways' most modern revision of the seat, and it looks visually very pleasing and inviting. I would more than happily sit here for anything up to eight hours. The leg room is wonderful, and there's even a footrest, which probably helps with blood circulation during a long flight. The seat back pocket features ample space to hold all my rubbish, and just above this is a very small additional storage area, well, for, um, I don't know. For those who can't share nicely, there's a double armrest with a small table which is pretty handy for your welcome drink. Below this is the remote for the in-flight entertainment and a button to put your seat back just a few inches. As the rain begins to fall, it's time for the in-flight safety demonstration. I personally prefer the old one, but maybe that's because I'm old myself. It is, however, very British. Eyes this way. Lovely weather for it today demonstrate the safety features of this aircraft and your attention is essential as this may be different from any aircraft you've flown on before. It's hard to see because of the rain but opposite is a beautiful Norse Boeing 787 which will be flying at the very end of this trip. Stay tuned for that one.
now that we're above the clouds and into the sun, things start off with a semi-warm hand towel. Refreshing. The pre-meal service, of course, needs a good movie. British Airways does not disappoint here. I love how varied the content is, and there's always plenty of new release movies. I'm also a big fan of the interface, which is very easy to use and also very visually appealing. Quite a few airlines have recently paired up with Paramount or HBO, which is very clever because it expands the content, but also they usually give you a few episodes. Naturally you want to see what happens next, so you're more likely to sign up when you get back home. There's also plenty of games and a section for the kids. The headphones carry the British Airways logo, but I couldn't tell you who made them. I'm not really bothered though, because for premium economy, this is a very decent pair of headphones, with some good sound quality. I'll just add, you may want to avoid seat 14A. Why? Because I've been stung again by a blank space with no window. For the pre-meal starter, I've gone for a glass of wine, other beverages do exist, and this very tasty packet of pretzels. Here's a copy of the menu, featuring today's meals and also drinks on the back. For the main, I've gone for the very safe option of the rosemary chicken, which was spot on, succulent and cooked perfectly. This comes with a side salad called Herb Freaker. The closest way to describe it is probably like a couscous pasta, if that makes any sense at all. To complete the meal, this delicious and eye-watching chocolate ganache really hit the spot. No complaints here. To be honest though, I've never had a bad dessert on British Airways. Three hours in and midway through my second movie, it's time to visit the onboard bathroom, which is pretty standard. There's no exciting or exotic amenities in here. One of the best reasons to go for the premium economy product is because of the huge price difference to business class and because of the extra inches you get from the width and also the extra recline, I even managed to get a few hours sleep. Shortly before landing, I received this warm and delicious chicken wrap. And did you know that the air in a plane can be as dry as the Sahara Desert? Knowing this, I opted for a tea with milk and sugar. And much to my delight, because who doesn't love ice cream, this posh looking Jude's very vanilla. Before we land, I'll just point out that today's flight cost me 42,500 avias, otherwise known as air miles, and 91 pounds in fees. That's not bad, although the best way to be to redeem air miles is in the premium cabins. As we approached Doha Hamad International Airport, the skies were really clear, and we got this beautiful impressive view of the city centre. Before disembarking, the cabin was thrown into this very appropriate blue and lovely LED lighting. For today's conclusion and review, I'm going to walk to the centre of Doha Hamad International's terminal to stand next to the very iconic and large yellow teddy bear. So that was a really good flight. I've not been in premium content for a long time. So I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but everything from the food to the cabin crew was really good. Even the sea, I don't mind it for six, seven hours. Maybe if you're going somewhere like Australia, you wouldn't want that. Plenty of room. It's not quite as big as Emirates A380, you get two extra inches there. But I would definitely fly that again. Um.